while I was getting settings dialed in for this filament, got carried away. Thought it'd be interesting to make a comparison here showing a Rockney versus classic walls. Now, if you're not familiar with that difference, this top one here is a Rockney and it varies the thickness of the filament versus right here, or the thickness of the walls, I should say. So the yellow and orange are the walls that would vary the inside and outside walls. And right there, you can see how it makes them bigger versus this has to come back and make a little gap fill because this yellow and orange is the thickness of that little hole right there, the 0.4 millimeters. And what the Arachne does is it stretches it out. So right here, it might be 0.6 or 0.7 millimeters to fill in that gap in one pass. It has to slow down a little bit to push out that much plastic and then it would speed back up right here. Versus this keeps it all the same thickness every time with what they call a classic wall generator. But then it has to come back in and fill this tiny corner pocket. So pros and cons, this takes longer using a Rockney because it has to slow down to spread out and then speeds back up. This can just haul butt and then come back and does a little boop, swipe. Now you have stuff like these holes and making this thin little pass in there actually weakens the part slightly because it has to make a thin piece that connects versus here, that 0.4 nozzle might be pushing out like 0.5 millimeter thick walls. And so it's able to fully connect everything. Obviously this part would be even stronger if I add one more wall, as you can see, that way there's not just a thin strip connecting it. So with a Rockney, we get slightly stronger, but slightly longer print time as it tries to make all those little adjustments and maybe a slight uh, change in dimensional accuracy versus the classic walls. We get more dimensional accuracy, slightly weaker part, but it prints faster. I don't know that it makes too much of a difference. Now we can go back out and see that's our parts right there. So comparing the two final prints, when we look at these, this one is the classic wall. You can see where it struggled a little bit to make that thin portion. And then the Arachne did a lot better. But you can kind of see where there's more of a lump as it transitioned the thicknesses there, trying to blend stuff in. The other thing that I think what caused most of the issue with the Arachne print is because it's trying to adjust the flow constantly to change the width that it's printing at, they don't allow for adjusting the speed to slow down on overhangs. So if you can see here, I can get it to focus on this underside, it's actually pretty nice and smooth for being such a steep overhang like that. But if you come and compare it to these, there's a lot of junk and buildup because it continues printing at that same 150, 200 millimeters a second. And so the plastic doesn't have time to cool like it does over here. So we get that light on it, right? So you got that nice clean overhangs here where the support material touches on this classic one. And then the Arachne, which is this one, you get all this gunk that builds up and it transfers onto the inside because the plastic isn't able to cool. And so then that affects how the gauges mount. So it's just a lot more post processing. And then even on like these flat surfaces, when you get the light on it right, you can see that there's a little bit more of a texture on the Arachne version, even though these were printed at the same time with the same cooling and everything. So it's really just that Arachne versus classic. But a big part of that is if you're gonna have parts that need support, it might be better to still use classic. It's just a lot cleaner and then easier to post process afterwards.